Today we're floating around in the gorgeous Italian city of Venice. I'll be going through six pretty darn convincing reasons for you to visit here, and I think the last one might just be the decision maker for you. But that's for you to decide. Let's get right into it. Six, stunning art and museums. Venice is a real treat for art lovers, offering a mix of old and newer artworks from different centuries. The city has plenty of galleries and museums, giving you many options for each day of your holiday. To start your art adventure, head over to the Scuola Grande di San Rocco. It's a grand building with impressive paintings by a famous Venetian artist, Tintoretto. Another interesting spot is Key Rizzonico, located in a beautifully restored palace. This museum focuses on the art and culture of 18th century Venice, showcasing paintings, Murano glass chandeliers, decorative arts, and carnival frescoes that offer a glimpse into the city's rich history. For a deeper dive into Venetian art, you can head to the Gallery dell'Accademia, which displays works inspired by Byzantine and Baroque styles. And don't miss exploring Doge's Palace, or Palazzo Ducal, where you'll find masterpieces like Tintoretto's Paradise and Vittore Carpaccio's Lion of St. Mark, and get to walk across the famous Bridge of Sighs. If modern art is more your thing, the Peggy Guggenheim collection showcases European and American art from the 20th century. You'll see famous pieces from artists like Picasso, Pollock, and Kandinsky, and you can wrap up your visit with a stroll around the peaceful sculpture garden. Five, you can hop island to island. Venice is like a puzzle of over 100 islands, separated by canals and connected by bridges. Sometimes you might not even realize you're moving from one to another. Each of these islands has its own vibe, offering lots to explore. To jump from island to island, you can ride the water bus, hire a water taxi, or even rent a private boat. One interesting and beautiful island to check out is Murano, famous for its glass-making tradition that goes way back to the 13th century. You can watch skilled craftsmen at work in the many workshops and grab some unique glass items like vases, chandeliers, and sculptures, perfect souvenirs to bring back home. Another interesting stop is Burano, especially if you're into arts and crafts. This island has a rich history of lace making. While you're there, visit the lace museum and shop for handmade products like handkerchiefs, doilies, and tablecloths. And for a change of pace, how about a beach day on Lido? This 11-kilometer sandbar is famous for hosting the Venice Film Festival, but it also offers sunny beaches where you can kick back and relax. Speaking of festivals, here's another pretty convincing reason to head to Venice. 4. Carnival of Venice One of the best reasons to visit Venice is its annual Carnival, a world-famous carnival that we absolutely love. People have been talking about it since the 11th century when folks would throw a big street party to celebrate the end of winter. The dates change every year, but it usually happens in the two weeks before Lent starts. Now, here's what makes Carnival so awesome. Masks and costumes are a big deal. People have been wearing them since the beginning, and it's all about being able to have fun without anyone knowing who you are. It's like a chance to let loose, forget about your usual status, and do things you might not normally do. Carnival is like a massive show, and everyone is invited to join in on the fun by dressing up. The whole thing kicks off with a big event in St. Mark's Square, filled with amazing performances and parades, and it doesn't stop there. For the next two weeks, there are masked balls in fancy palaces, street performances, art exhibitions, live music, theater shows, costume competitions, and even water parades. Even the gondolas get dressed up for the occasion. It's a celebration like no other and one of the best times to visit Venice. Three, incredible wine. For wine enthusiasts eyeing a trip to Venice, here's some exciting news. It's one of the most unique wine regions in Italy. Can you believe they've been making wines here since 200 BC? The areas of Veneto, Friuli Venezia Giulia, and Trentino Alto Adige are all part of what's called the Republic of Venice. Now, if you're into reds and whites, Veneto is the place to be. They're famous for Amarone, a top-notch red, and Val Policella, a sweet and fruity blend that makes up a big chunk of Veneto's wine production. And don't forget about Prosecco, a bubbly favorite made from Glera wine grapes that are special to Veneto and Friuli Venezia Giulia. On the white wine front, Friuli Venezia Giulia is the go-to spot. They're known for their light and fragrant whites like Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, and Riesling. 
And you'll find some local varieties too, like Friulano, Verduzzo, and Pecolet. Now, if you head up north to Trentino Alto Adige, which borders Austria, you'll discover a majority of white wines. The top picks here include Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay, Gewürztraminer, and Pinot Blanc. As for reds, Chiava takes the lead, but you'll also come across Le Grand and Pinot Noir. If you're up for a little adventure into the Venetian countryside, there are loads of options to explore wineries and vineyards. One recommendation is Azienda Agricola Cantina Spada, where you can taste a variety of red, white, and dessert wines surrounded by 10 hectares of lush countryside. Cheers to that. Two, delicious, delicious, delicious food. All right, let's dive into the tasty side of Venice. Because it's right on the Adriatic Sea and used to be a big trading hotspot, Venice has this super delicious and unique cuisine. They got their hands on spices like nutmeg, ginger, and saffron, and got influenced by places like Austria and France, all of which adds up to some seriously good eats. Of course, seafood is the big star on the menu, but you'll also dig into fresh veggies like asparagus and artichokes from the lush islands. Now when you're in Venice, you absolutely have to try Kiketi. It's like Venetian tapas, small plates of goodness, think crostini, fancy open-faced sandwiches, and polpette, fried balls of tuna, potatoes, cheese, or meat. And you can find these delights in bakery, which are basically cozy wine bars. And for the seafood fans, there's this must-try dish called sarde in sour. It was created by sailors and fishermen to keep their fish tasty. The iconic canals. Venice is all about its canals, the unique water roads that wind their way through the city. They serve as the lifelines, moving people, goods, and services. For the ultimate experience, jump on a traditional gondola ride. Go for a private one if you can swing it. It's a bit pricier, but totally worth it. It lets you explore those off-the-beaten-path spots you might miss on the public vaporetto or water bus. There are about 150 canals in Venice, but the Grand Canal takes the cake. It's the largest and most famous, forming this cool four-kilometer S-shape through the historic center. On both sides, you've got these ancient palaces dating back to the 13th and 18th centuries. They were homes to Venice's wealthy and noble families, each trying to outdo the other. The result? A breathtaking display of stunning architecture and art. Connecting different parts of the city over the Grand Canal are four standout bridges, including the iconic Rialto Bridge. It used to be a vital link, connecting the political hub of St. Mark's with the economic community of San Polo. Now, Venice's charm isn't just skin deep, it's also below the water's surface. The city's rich history is intertwined with its scenic canals, setting it apart from any other city. Are the canals man-made? It's not a straightforward yes or no. Venice was originally a lagoon around the fifth century with small islands separated by natural canals. As Venice developed, these natural canals were widened and deepened, helping transport materials around the city. Despite their importance, the canals aren't very deep, ranging from 10 to 15 feet. They've been reinforced over time to prevent buildings from sinking into the water. While it may be tempting to take a dip, swimming in the canals is a big no-no, not to mention it's prohibited by law and comes with a hefty fine. And about that water, it's not for drinking, Venice's canals have a mix of salt and fresh water, known as brackish. Heavy chemical runoff and waste from industrial areas and rivers contribute to the water quality. With over 600 cruise ships anchoring in Venice each year, it's best to admire the views and skip drinking from the canals. The canals connect to the sea. The saltwater lagoon beneath Venice stretches along the Po River in the south and the Piave River in the north, running across the Adriatic Sea on the northeastern shore of Italy. The canals are definitely the most iconic feature of Venice, in my opinion, so it's my number one reason for visiting the city. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video or found it handy, I'd really appreciate if you like and subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration.